Smash fans, let me guess. When you first picked up Melee, you thought Roy was hot fire, didn't you? He had a really cool sword, his moves burned your opponents alive, and that all-powerful smash attack devastated your circle of friends, solidifying your place as the best on your block. Well, as time went on, maybe you dropped Smash for the next new fed, or maybe you moved on to Brawl. But for those of you who found out about competitive Melee, you probably noticed something interesting about those tournament matches. Or maybe you noticed something that wasn't in those tournament matches. Eventually, you found out nobody was picking Roy. Roy has historically been a big point of contention for casual players because of his natural rivalry with Marth. After all, his forward smash, flare blade, and brutal counterattack can end stocks with a bang. However, at anything but a casual level, Roy's moves are strictly less useful than his rival in every single way. He has less effective range, less knockback on his moves, lower combo potential, worse recovery, worse edge guarding, and little to no kill setups. There's no beating around the bush or sugarcoating this fact. He is absolutely one of the worst characters in the game. Roy has two gigantic downfalls that make him all but utterly unplayable at the top level of melee. One, crouch canceling, and two, no kill potential. Crouch canceling literally invalidates all of his moves, up to a ridiculous percent for most characters. This limits his approaches to the only ones that can't be CC'd. Grab. Roy's grab range is pretty decent, and his good dash dance range and speed allow him to find some good grabs. However, if an opponent simply stays on platforms the entire time, Roy does not have an answer. He has to severely outplay them multiple times to even finish off a stock. None of his aerials kill until way above 200%. His aerial mobility leaves something to be desired, and his dash dance range and grab, his only good tools, cannot be used in the air. This means that Roy's only method of killing is either landing a random smash attack which are not only slow, but leave you wide open for counterattacks. A random double edge dance hit, which can be seen coming a mile away from the first two swings, or by countering a strong enough move, which is possible, but also leaves you wide open for counterattacks once again. Add this to the fact that every time he gets hit, he's one of the easiest characters to combo, and every time he gets comboed, he ends up off stage, and every time he's off stage, he sucks at getting back, and, well, you either have to make zero mistakes or vastly outplay your opponent to win with Roy. Despite these things, Roy does have some cool tricks up his sleeve, but uh, I don't really know what they are, so let's just move on. Roy probably has the best chance against fast fallers that fall into his down tilt and grab combos and can be edge guarded. However, they are some of the best characters in the game, so in the end it's still a struggle for him, especially since Marth is strictly better against them than Roy. Floaty characters on the other hand are Roy's bane. He has very few combos on them and even less killing potential, all while they are still abusing the same lack of range and good hitboxes that he has, just as well as the other fast fallers. But the thing about melee is that its depth is so great and its mechanics and movement are so varied that good players can often defeat weaker ones even with characters this bad. It happens all the time. There will be people telling you to switch to a top tier or quit and just give up, but if Roy's the guy for you, then don't forget, a skilled Roy can beat any fox. Except for Armada's Fox. And Mangos. And, well, probably Levens too, or, or S-Fats, actually. Well, Ice. Hmm. Well, what about Lucky? Uh, actually, maybe Hacks could lose? I, I... While admittedly Roy does have some powerful KO moves, such as his forward smash, counter, and possibly the later half of his double edge dance and flare blitz attacks, he has very few setups for them on the vast majority of the cast. All of the attacks he could feasibly hit with are of the absolute lowest power, and he struggles to finish off anybody who is smart about abusing platforms. Roy is actually pretty fast, as his ground speed is quick, and his short hop and fast fall speed bring him to the ground quickly after an aerial. Roy has deceptively poor range. Although his moves technically reach pretty far and are disjointed, they're so weak at the tip that it's basically not even worth using. His stronger hitbox are closer to him, thus reducing his effective range. Roy potentially has the worst recovery in the game. Not only does he drop like a rock offstage, making his side B stalling less effective than Marth's, but his up B has an awful hitbox that can trade poorly, resulting in a death. In some positions, Roy has making it back to the stage at all. Roy does have a decently high fall speed, meaning he can live vertical KO moves more easily. However, his weight is below average, resulting in him being sent far offstage from most kill moves. Dash dancing is potentially the most powerful tool for any character in neutral, and Roy's is quite good. 
However, other than his down tilt and grab, he lacks a lot of safe options from it. All of his aerials have low knockback and can be easily crouch cancelled. Again, his dash dance and grab are extremely powerful tools, but he has no other moves that can cut off other characters' approaches. His shield is less than stellar, and his options from shield are both slow and weak. Roy is your main if... You want to play a low tier character that's still relatively fast. You enjoy the reward of thoroughly outplaying your opponent. You want to be unique and stand out among the rest of the generic crowd. You think his moveset's genuinely fun and interesting to use, or if you simply love the Fire Emblem series.